Hello there everybody and welcome back. We are going to do something a little bit different today. We are going to have a dive into Drop Zone. It is a brand new early access game that just came out on Wednesday, which as of this recording was about four days ago, February 15th. And it's a game made by Sparky Pants Studio. Unfortunately, I was not able to figure out where this company came from, who the developers are, because apparently this is their very first game under the name Sparky Pants, so they claim to have a good repertoire of experience, but I could not for the life of me figure out what games they have developed in the past, but they bring us a kind of different take on like a MOBA style kind of, was it, brawler game, in that you're going to be, instead of controlling one hero, you're going to be controlling three of them. And in one of the game modes, you're going to be doing a 1v1 type of match. All the way up to, what is it, 2v2 I believe? So, this is going to be a different take on what you understand of MOBAs. At least the MOBA style anyway. Because, aside from lanes and that, the objective is completely different, but the concept as far as the characters themselves is going to be almost exactly the same. You have your three basic abilities here for each of your characters, and in this case, they're also completely modular. It's not just the heroes themselves that dictate the abilities, it's the equipment that you put on them that dictates their abilities. So, we have the pulverizers, which does like an AoE type of like slam damage attack, as opposed to this, what is this, this flail, which I, it does damage in front of you. I have not actually took a look at this, so maybe not the most preparation work at hand, but this is where the MOBA style kind of gets flipped on its head a little bit. Outside of the fact you're controlling three characters, you have like six different slots to completely arrange your character as you wish. And the ultimate ability, as you would see here, is dictated by the character itself that you choose. So it's not possible to change this. Although it has the option for it, maybe for later on down the road. But you got your three activatable abilities here, which... Another different tweak is that it doesn't actually have to be activatable. Like some of these abilities, it's just straight up passive. Like this proximity response here, which would give me extra armor. It's just a passive armor regen here. So instead of leveling up as normal though, you actually have the requirements to actually level up to actually even get access to the ability to begin with. If you look down below here. So to get access to your ultimate ability, you have to be fully leveled up. And everything else, it depends on the equipment you choose there. So, like this offensive ability, the Amoeba Protocol, which gives me a stacking health increased, I get right away at level 1. But if I want to get access to something like Heart of the Pack, which gives me a health regen, I require level 3 to get access to that. And we will get more into that as we progress, as I talk more about this game. For I'm planning on doing a 1v1 type series for this game as we finish up looking through here but as I said pretty much everything at this point is like adjustable all the way up to like a level 4 type of abilities I have not seen anything that also requires level 5 so I'm assuming that's only the ultimate itself because max level you can get for each of these rigs as they're called is level 5 and you cannot get them any higher than that so you even have the ability to switch them up with preloaded type of loadouts for each of them and it also quickly swaps out gear if you were to have like a single character for two different uh, setups. So, Feist here could be a completely different role for my one of these other loadouts, or squaws actually is what they call them. So you do have flexibility if there's a preferred character you like because of like their ultimate traits. And also, if you look here on software type down below, it also gives them additional slots for the character you pick. Which are basically these two things on the right. Feist would give us an offensive and defensive type of abilities to get access to, and these are just passive traits. Everything on the left are more based on your equipment. And everything, as you saw, I believe, at least these first three are completely visual. I don't think these three are. Not from what I can tell, and I completely forgot what Feist had. So, let's go back to Heart of the Pack. This squad here you're looking at now is what you start off with with the tutorial. And... This game is intended to be free to play when it fully launches, but as it stands now, you have to pay a $20 fee if you want to get access to the early access, the beta portion. But it unlocks all the characters for you here, and you get a handful of equipment to swap between. 
also what kind of variety you have access to, so gearboxes and probably buying them down the road. I haven't looked too much into the, the payment method just yet. From what I can tell, you can only like buy crates. And it has a different list of crates here, so apparently, yeah, this is all from last year's stuff, because this game was in closed beta all of last year, I believe. And maybe in early alpha, even a little bit before then. But this is the starting squad you get for your tutorial, and this is actually the equipment it starts off with too. So we're going with the fu full-on tutorial squad that I'm showing you here. We got Widget, which is your, your healer, your support character. So as for what you start off with, it's the Try and True Trinity. You got your tank and vice, damage dealer and recon here with a missile launcher, a cloak, and a couple other traits. And he also, instead of an activated ability, this uh, conductor spike is also a passive which it triggers when he gets low health and stuns people. So you got your basic trinity here, which is your support, healing, and stunning. Recon, of course, your damage dealer with a long range artillery strike with the rocket cluster. And Vice is, does the AoE damage, and this is going to be pretty important to AoE damage because there's a lot of, what is it, creep on the map, basically, if that's the proper term you would use for MOBA. Because after all, there are no lanes, but there's a lot of clutter that you use for your leveling up experience. So, let's dive into at least a bot match so I can explain the nuances of this. There is also custom game modes here, which I don't know the variety just yet, because we're still in early access. But you can do a horde mode type of style with two of your, two of your friends here, or you can do a solo, which we'll also have a look at briefly. But... The main meat, at least for me, of the game is, is being able to play like, play against another opponent. Or in this case, we're going to do against bots, and this is against AI opponents. So, with with all this talking, let's show you what the actual meat of the game really is. And you can judge for yourself if it's to your liking. So, this is going to be the map layout we have here. It's pretty traditional. You have one opponent, one team starting on one side, and you have the other team starting on the other but what we have here is a bit of a hybrid between RTS traditional map here where we have these watchtowers you gain access to and a bunch of these, what is it, objectives you have to grab. So the main goal of this game is to grab as many cores as you can which are scattered by minions on the map and then take them to the middle here where you are vulnerable to attack. It's about a 10 second channel to do that, to transfer it up here, but when you do complete it, you get to increase your score up on top here, and you have about 15 minutes to do this. And as I was saying before, the experience setup here is a little bit different, where we start off normally just trying to get our positions on our half of the map figured out, depending on your strategy. But, as you gain experience, you get to choose one of your characters to level up, and that will unlock the abilities down below that you can see. So if I were to upgrade Recon, I would actually gain access to all his level 2 abilities you see there. And this, these giant uh, creatures here, these Hive, what is it? I, I don't think these are called the Alphas. The bigger, like, walking creatures are called the Alphas. So, but when you kill these things, they basically drop a core, which you can see actually trapped on the ground there. And, oh, and speaking of which, you can hear that audio cue now. That's the opponent trying to hand in a core right now, and unfortunately I'm not in a good position for that, so I'm going to have to abandon it just now. While I try and fight for the second core here, and maybe I can get a lead that way against the bot. Let's see. I have no actual heals just yet for Widget, because this heal here is actually a passive. Which I'm going to activate right now. And what it does, is it triggers on every time I use an ability. So... Every time I use my stun or my heal, it gives them an additional heal boost. So, this is not looking very good, so we're going to try and backdoor him here. So, this is a bit of a mess here. We got like three warriors, or three tanks. Wow, this is a very formidable group. Going to be damn hard to kill. But, we're going to unload missiles here. We're going to try and keep Widget alive, because she does have a core. And I don't know. Actually, they are a bit sc scattered, aren't they? And they are running away. Oh, crap. That was not what I want. And one thing I have not failed to mention there just yet is there are like bonus objectives on the bottom left. And apparently giving them the first blood gave them like the first score. Or at least a one time score for first blood. So they got an extra core out of that. So this is not looking like a promising start for me. 
Prophecy, which is going to spawn in about 10 seconds here. If I got that heal off, that would have been good for me. The only reason I hesitate on the heal is it actually will also heal the opponent if I don't aim it right. So that was the reason why I did not have that play down, but we're going to try and come back through this. I got my group back up, we got Recon going, and there's where they kind of killed one of the hives. Okay, looks like an opportunity to kind of jump, give them the jump, but with them all tanks up, this is going to be a little tricky. And as you can clearly see, as a result of that match, you can choose your layout a little bit. You can choose what kind of comp you want. Of course, traditional MOBA sense kind of dictates you want to try and have a nice balance rather than go all, all warrior. Only problem is it's really hard to focus my damage really well here, especially with that dang flamethrower. But, let's see, Recon's taking a bit of hits. Come on, I don't... Recon can get out of there, but I have no way to heal, and this looks like the host just got back up, or a spawner. So, we're just gonna hit the B key, we're gonna run on back. You don't actually have a recall here, so... When you set yourself back to heal up and repair, you have to go all the way back, so... It works out well, because Feist is back up. We're gonna get everything back up, but... With three warriors, I'm not in a good shape for fighting them head-on. I'm gonna have to go for, like, a bit of an experience strategy. And try and beat them on the late game. Because they're just straight up outlasting me. Even with Widget's heal, so... And me fooling around trying to kill them there is making it a little tricky, too. And they're so strong on AoE as well. That's causing a bit of a problem with them killing these guys down a lot quicker. But nonetheless, we're going to kill what we can here. We're going to get ourselves more level. So I think I want to focus on as much AoE as I can. So, strength up Recon. Ideally, get his ultimate up. Because this is a bit of a bots match after all. So I can kind of abuse the AI a little bit with how likely they're going to stay clumped up. But now, we got ourselves two cores here. I'm ready to hand in a moment. And every time they respawn... The, the, what is it, these Kavash is what they're actually called, will drop additional cores, but they're also a little bit tougher. But you can see the visuals on the ground, so let's fully upgrade Recon. I want to get access to my level 5 ultimate, which is an AoE, was it, Orbital Strike. So, the reason this is good for me is because it does AoE damage and they love to clump up. But I think at the same time, that's going to be my ultimate strategy, is trying to beat them that way. So I got three cores here. Once I hand in, I'll be in good shape. And they're grabbing all the watchtowers. I can see them on the mini-map. So with this having RTS style element and like the map control with the towers in play, it does pay to have a constant eye on the mini-map, especially if you have vision. As it stands now, we're due for probably a fight here at the center. Once Feist gets all set up and my heals are going, I want to get fully healed up and maybe try and get that level 5 upgrade. Okay. We might be in a fight with Warhead here. But he's by himself. We're good. We're not in, we're not in trouble here. And if I could stun, that'll be perfect. Now start step a little bit. We got our first kill to match. And oh boy, he's trying to back door. Let's try and push our advantage here some. Although I have no way to stun him or can cancel the channel. The only way I could have stopped that is either to push him away from it or to have, like, Widget stun, which unfortunately was on cooldown. And this is the problem. You can see him getting healed just a slight bit from the pulse. But when I kill them, oh boy, bot's being predictable and being dumb again. So this is where the turnaround's going to happen, isn't it? There's the stun to cancel that out. Feist is going to kill himself. Don't ask me how that works in this universe, but Feist seems to be okay with it. Alright, Recon... You're going to try and f poke them. you got the mobility, so this should work well for you. And he also has a cloak, which I've been neglecting too, haven't I? Now, which one is this moving? So that's Widget. So Widget, try support. Okay, unload everything. Total fission. That was a bit of a mistake. I did not realize that. That's, a, that's one of the objectives that's always available from what I understand, is if you have control of all the four watchtowers... Then you get additional, like, core bonuses or core points. So if I have contested that a little bit more, that would have been great. As it stands now, I'm a little bit further behind. And Flamethrower, as you would expect, is starting to debuff me, so... i got to try and get a little more spread out. And Feist is still level 1, my Feist, so... 
he's going to be a little bit squishy. But if I can get Recon to level 5, that shouldn't matter too much. What is the cooldown on this? Uh, no, that's not even the right character. What is the cooldown Orbital Strike? 90 seconds, so not too terribly bad. I just got to fight for those big core matches. Oh, and this looks like a good time to get good AoE damage in. Oh crap, did I just heal? No, I just healed on them. That was a huge whiff. As you can clearly see, I just mitigate so much of my healing. Now, I'm going to have to back up here, take some stutter stepping, because it looks like they want to attack Widget. A little bit of AoE damage that actually slowed them down. I've, I did not pay attention to that little tidbit. Come on. Keep them alive. I think it's time to bail. That was a massive whiff. Everyone run back, we need heals. We're not out of it just yet though, thankfully, but... If I, I still need to get my level 5 in, so that way I can abuse that extra power swing. So Recon going out, Vice is up, Widget going out, out there, and I do have Fission at the top section, so... I kind of know if they're attack. Oh, they are attacking this one. So, let's get some damage in. Although Recon is taking massive amounts of damage. This time I'm not going to squander my heal. I have no movement ability buff though, and I face. Oh, oh, we're gonna get one. We got one. This is a nice turnaround because now that this hive, the spawner is fully upgraded, I'm gonna get three cores out of this. So this is gonna be an amazing turnaround for me. I just gotta make sure I focus my damage and make sure everyone stays alive. And maybe I might get my level upgrade as a process. Because as you clearly see, I'm investing all my effort into leveling up recon. That of course it's weakening everyone else. And another downside of that strategy is that it also increases the cooldown from what I understand or the respawn timer of any of your characters that die. So you have to be mindful and careful of that. So if I, you go for a really fast level 5 character, you're sure you have an amazingly powerful momentum swing. But if you ever die, did I even grab, okay I did grab the cores, I thought I was missing one at first. But if you miss or end up getting any of your characters killed as a result, you're going to be punished that much more heavily. Now, the plan is to let them hand in the cores and then try and kill them off, because I think that's where they're going next. And now, let's let's see the fruits of our labor, shall we? Oh, damn it. That is not what I want. Although Warhead took a massive beating. Can I kill him? Oh boy, I can't stun him. Oh, he dodged. He dodged, that was good. Come on, Widget, stun him. Okay, that's good, that's good. No hand in just yet, and I just need one more core. Uh, he slowed, he's dead. I just gotta make sure I have as much health as possible for his kill. Perfect, perfect. That's just the one character I want to have it too, so... Oh, he's back with a vengeance, so... Maybe have to fall back a little bit. But I do have a stun available. Come on. Come on. We're not going to get the one core, but it is going to be a tie once I do hand in. So, can I fall, fall back and to heal? I think I'm safe with two of them down. So now we're going to have ourselves a tie score. This is looking good. Actually, I want to just grab this tower for a little bit of fission. Never hurts. Never hurts, especially since I have fission over here, so I know when they're kind of poking out. Like right now, this is a little awkward. Although, Widget's in a good position. Stun, heal, do your damage. Although, AI is really damn good at avoiding that. So, let's punish him for that, shall we? Good night. Ah, damn it. I was too sl I was not fast enough on the slow. That would have turned it around quickly. Uh, Feist is down. That's going to hurt a bit. And he is healing. So, let's get the heals. Let's get the stun. Get out of my circle so I can heal myself, stupid warhead. This is getting pretty intense now, but I think I'm starting to get the upper hand. I'm just mismanaging my control a little bit. 
So, I have two strategies I could do here. I could try and kill another spawner to get the cores, or I could try and force out of them. Because right now, it looks like they're really damn could... They're really intent on grab handing this core, and with my 20 second re... Yeah, 20 seconds to respawn, that's probably not going to work out to my liking. Yeah, this is not going to work out. Unless I can get a kill. Looks like they're going to get the lead again, so I'm going to have to do something desperate. Something drastic here. So we're going to have to find one more, two cores to grab. Oh, if you want to come in here, fine. Be my guess. Be my guess indeed. Although I have no stun. Oh, oh damn it. I've squandered it again. Not being able to get the slow off. Nope, oh, this is not going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot, actually. We lost Widget. We're gonna... Oh, damn it. That was looking so good, too. Was I not paying attention to the level? It was the fact I was surrounded, damn it. Oh, this does not work out well. I think that's game. We have one minute left. I'm going to lose the bots trying to show off this game. How embarrassing is that? Especially since killing the other players is not actually going to give me experience, so I should have gone after the Kadash. Kavash, rather. Whatever the hell they're called. Either way, I have an upgrade for that, too. And I've kind of been squandering because I only got two stacks of that, don't I? Well, Meepo Protocol is when he gets a kill, I guess, because I've been fighting a lot of rigs and I have only two stacks, so... I'm assuming that's what happened. So, I'm going to have 20 seconds to kill a Hive. To be able to actually get two cores, so I think that's game. Uh, if only I had gotten that one kill there. Dang AI is really good at dodging my AoE. And I was gambling, trying to be able to kill that one. Ugh, not gonna work out to my liking, is it? Especially with Recon not here. Where is Recon anyway? There you are, you slacker. Well, that was in embarrassing display I just got my ass beat mainly because apparently I was not prepared for three tanks and they were really damn resilient to head on early game at least at least with their equipment I never did have a look at what equipment they had let's see we have flames that were obviously damaged over time there's level three health buff landfall that's like an initiate which they never used and a bunch of other passive stuff here. Armor, health, regener regeneration. I'm seeing a lot of the same. They all have flamethrowers. Holy crap, seriously? Did they seriously all have flamethrowers? Huh, interesting. That explains why I had so much issue, because... The flamethrower also does bonus damage if I'm debuffed with that flamethrower effect, so... I don't know how much that stacks, but... Either way, there was some momentum going on there, if I had played more passive game. I wasn't really paying attention, though, to what they were feeling, so that was my mistake. Now, with that embarrassment behind us, let's have a quick look at Infestation, which... I haven't really tried yet, so I'm not even sure what to expect. It might have been nice to read the rules, though. To actually have a good idea. It is clearly like a defense, mind you. I'm probably standing back and defending and trying to fight off the horde. But this is this is another game mode you have access to, if the competitive side is not your thing. And hopefully as this game enters more of a polished and complete version there, we'll have a lot more options available to any kind of player that wants to play this kind of MOBA style type of matchup. If they don't like fighting competitively, and we do have power-ups, which was in the 1v1 match I just did. You have to kill like the big mini-boss there to get access to it. So, where are the horde? They're way down here, so obviously, you kind of need to spread out to get, like, the best value to cover all your bases. But this looks really damn straightforward otherwise. You, you deal with progressively more and more hordes to fight, and their ultimate goal is to get into the middle destroy that power generator. Really damn straightforward. I don't think there's an end point, though. I think this is an endless horde. So, we're going to keep fighting stuff, we're going to kill these spawners, and... I think, in a nutshell, this is what the Drop Zone is, at least in its current form here. From, like I said earlier in the video, this game is expected to be a free-to-play game, although that could change as they reach a 
final version, their completion. So we will get back to you on that in a video here's hoping regarding that state when it does get released fully. But I am hoping to do some more real 1v1 matches here down the road. So if this game seems appealing for you, let, let me know. Give me a like, whatever you want to do. And I will see you on the flip side. Thank you all for watching.